Manufacturing, execution, and inventory in warehouse. Yes, right. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. We might do it uh, on Thursday, or you know, or we might start manufacturing even today. Depends on you know how things go and how tired you get. Lots of factors. Okay. Uh, so my plan again is to finish off almost everything, or perhaps even every all the chapters by end of Sunday. Okay. That that's really my plan of action. So we'll have everything done by then, and then dedicate. Tuesday and Thursday just for a thorough review of everything before the exam okay so th that's that's really what I'm planning uh, I've got lots of different questions that you still have not seen for many of the units so I'll pull those out as a review uh, and then I'll probably set up some sort of a an exam for Tuesday okay so we'll just sit down you'll you'll do all the questions on Thursday we'll completely go over everything uh, I'll try to make it multiple. Cho I'll try to make it like the real exam, multiple choice. Um, I'll see. You know, depends on how much time I'm able to get. I might just cop out towards the end and just write regular questions. Okay. I'll try to make it all multiple choice. But uh, it's two and a half hours. But we may have a lot more questions than than eighty, right? Because eighty questions is just a sampling. Uh, so it might be a lot more than that. But I guess you can go a little quicker. Okay. Or we could extend a little bit, go for half an hour later or something. Tuesday, right? Tuesday. yeah. Next Tuesday, we'll do a, a thorough exam. And Thursday, we'll review, yeah, review the whole thing. Okay. And Friday, you can go and track the exam. Okay. So, um, so today, we'll do this order to cash process, sales order management. They keep calling it in different ways. Uh, it's the same thing, though. Okay. Uh, so, the different, uh, different organization levels in sales and distribution are company code, right, and then there are three organization levels called sales organization, distribution channel, and division, okay. Now, together, if you put all of them together, you get what is known as a sales area in SAP, okay. So, in sales and distribution, you have this concept of a sales area, which is a combination of these three, and we already know that when we're talking about the customer master, it's defined at three levels, right? It's defined at the uh, client level, the company code level, and the sales area level. That's what this is, okay? And we'll see a little more of this later. And then, of course, you've got plant, you've got storage location, and another uh, organization level is shipping point, right? The point from where the shipping is achieved. Now, the highlighted organization levels are those which are specific to sales and distribution. Right? They, they really exist because of sales and distribution. Okay, so those are dedicated to sales and distribution. Okay, so now we look at the three entities, sales organization, division, and distribution channel, and then we look at the definition of a sales area. Okay, so sales organization is all of these things. It's responsible for distributing goods and services, negotiating conditions, and uh, dealing with pro product liability and rights of recourse and things like that. Okay, that's the organization that's actually dealing with the customer uh, for sales and the overall thing is like this you've got client which has got many company codes and sales organizations come under company codes okay so a, com a sales organization belongs exclusively to a company code and a company code can have multiple sales organizations okay now this is different from what we saw for purchasing organizations Okay, that's a big difference between the two. Purchasing organization could cut across company code boundaries, right? You could have centralized purchasing for multiple company codes uh, and so on, which is not there in, in sales organizations. Okay, uh, and I really don't know exactly why that is the case. You know, what is it, the difference between the two that they made purchasing like that and they made sales like this? Sometimes I've been asked, but I've never been able to find out the answer. Okay, so all items in sales documents belong to sales organization, right? And by implication, they also belong to sales area, right? Because the sales area is defined in terms of a sales organization. So that is important. And uh, when we say uh, SD documents, right? In SAP, sometimes they'll use the term SD documents or sales documents, right? So we're not only talking about, uh, you know, sales inquiries and sales orders, but we're not talking about sales and distribution. Right. So we are talking about 
uh, outbound delivery we'll be talking about this shortly so we are talking in addition about outbound delivery and also the billing document okay the billing document uh, so we're talking about all of these documents but of course we're not talking about the invoice right the invoice is an accounting document but billing document is just what sales and distribution creates based on which accounting would raise an invoice okay so billing document is an internal document invoice is an external document sent to the customer so they're two separate documents but of course content wise they contain almost exactly the same information okay so all of these are referred to as sd documents so in a question if you see sd document you should be aware that it spans these uh, these levels of documents okay and obviously the purpose of a sales organization is to do all of these but from the point of view of the system from the point of view of analyzing information it can be used to take in account a regional national or international sub subdivision of markets what does that, that mean well you could have a sales organization which says sales organization east sales organization west and so on you could use this as a mechanism to subdivide the market geographically if you so desire okay and of course to use the sales and distribution module definitely you have to have at least one sales organization defined right so that's a requirement clearly and sales organization is the highest level of summation uh, summarization in sales statistics okay so when you're looking at sales statistics the highest level at which you summarize you would say okay this sales organization right and so above that you don't have any level of summarization in sd uh, yeah uh, the book says that a sales or organization is uniquely assigned or controlled but then the next sentence it says more than one sales organization can be assigned to a com company code it's describing this diagram one sales organization can be assigned to only one company code oh, but a company so code can have multiple sales organizations it's actually describing this very situation yeah sometimes they get little tripped up by themselves and they say the same thing in two different ways <laughs> that also happens okay so next is distribution channel and distribution channel is a medium through which you make the products available to the customer right um, now this is a little misleading the sentence it says it's a means through which sales materials reach the customer right it sounds like it's it's about physically getting it to the customer no it's not that right it is the outlet through which you sell it to the customer right it's like retail uh, you know uh, wholesale internet those are distribution channels so once you sold it of course the distribution is done through some other mechanism okay so it's really uh, that's that's the sense so we shouldn't get confused by the way in which this is word worded okay so it represents your strategies to again the word distribute but not really to what would you say to sell right to choose the medium through which you're selling to a customer okay so wholesale retail internet those are really what are distribution channels okay and then finally uh, to use sd again you need to have at least one distribution channel and distribution channel defines uh, defined responsibilities uh, you can achieve flexible pricing through distribution channels in other words you can price differently for different distribution channels and of course you can use the distribution channel as a way to differentiate sales statistics in other words you can analyze and say how how did we do in this distribution channel how did we do in that distribution channel simply because it's there you can analyze data uh, using that as a mechanism okay so the third concept is division and division is more along product lines okay so we've got three things here one is sales organization which is the organization responsible for selling to the customer maintaining the relationship with the customer second you had distribution channel which is the means through which we reach the customers through which we sell products to customers that's the second aspect third is division of uh, you know categorization of products into large families right so this is usually a family based product family based thing right so division represents a product line not just a single product but a bunch of related products which belong to a single product line so again you see examples here motorcycles spare parts services etc okay so that is division uh, yeah No, this is not a hierarchy. 
this is not a hierarchy nor is nor is this a hierarchy as we will very shortly see okay because you can combine a distribution channel uh, a division with multiple sales organizations now professor each division would have their specific product line or they can have many product lines in one division no each product line is a division each product, each product line is a division okay again to use sd you need to have at least one division right and system uses uh, division to determine we'll see this when we see the definition of sales area we'll know what this means the, otherwise it's uh, very confusing right and again uh, with divisions and in in fact we'll see when we look at sales areas we'll see that the concept of a sales area allows us to achieve highly differentiated pricing right so you can say for products of this division sold by this organization through this channel the price is x okay whereas the same product same sales organization through a different channel the price might be different okay that that's the idea okay and once again you can analyze statistics by division right so all of these uh, constitute the important organization units in sales and distribution so now we come to the central concept the notion of a sales area okay now sales area like we already said is a combination of sales organization division and distribution channel okay so the combinations so here we see examples so we've got two sales organizations frankfurt and berlin uh yeah this is sap right so frankfurt and berlin and they've got three distribution channels retail wholesale and internet and they've got uh how many do motorcycles computers and pumps three divisions right these are divisions right so here you might be any combination of these three is possible as a sales area right so in this example if you look at this frankfurt retail motorcycles that represents this okay that's one sales area and then uh, frankfurt retail computers is another sales area and so on so in this example you see there are five sales areas right now the company may not be using all possible combinations you know actually speaking if you've got you know x of this y of this and z of these then you can have a total of x times y times z sales areas but typically that won't be the case you know some combinations they would not be using okay so that's the idea of a sales area right but and for the exam point of view you definitely need to understand that a sales area is defined by division uh, sales organization division and distribution channel okay so now you can see how this allows us to have highly flexible pricing right you can set pricing and other kinds of things by sales area right now another important point is when we say we've got customer master defined at the level of client company code and sales area right so we have a customer and for that customer for every sales area we've got some specific information about that customer right for the same customer let's say in this particular company let's say there are five sales areas and you've got one customer one particular customer for that customer for each sales area you'll have specific information for that sales area okay so that's the idea of a sales area it belongs to a company code once again because all of the other entities belong to a company code sales area can belong to only one company code belongs okay uh, and again to use sd you need to have at least one sales area of course you need to have one of each of those other three so you will have at least one sales area if you followed that okay uh, and they again say each sd document is assigned to a sales area now one of the earlier slides we said each sd document is assigned to a sales organization you know this is a transitive thing you assign to a sales organization therefore that belongs to a particular sales area okay uh, again sales area is important because we already said that some of the master data is defined at the level of sales area right customer master data is defined at the level of sales area so now when you're creating a sales document for example a sales order right and then you specify the customer you specify the product and something then when the system goes and pulls up master data for this customer it's going to pull up the master data that's general of course and also master data that's relevant to the sales area in question right because when you 
uh, if you remember the first screen when you create a sales uh, document like an inquiry or order in the first screen you define all those three sales organization distribution channel division you specify those so at that point the sales area is defined before you even get into the second screen right so then in the second screen the sales area is known so when the system is going to go and pull the uh, master data for the customer it's going to pull the data that's relevant to the sales area that we are talking about okay so that's that's important so that's what we are saying here the system will access master data and perform checks based on the sales area in question okay so then we come to the other important organization elements which are plant and storage location um, so we know the relationship between plants and storage locations that uh, a plant has multiple storage locations okay and of course in the context of sales and distribution uh, the role that a plant plays is that it's the one that is delivering the product. You know, the customer ordered something and you're delivering the product to the customer from one of the storage locations belonging to a particular plant. Okay, so plant is, in that sense, as the owner of storage location, plant becomes important because that's where the products are kept, in the storage locations. Okay. So that's what this is showing you. Uh, this diagram again is a little bit misleading. What it's trying to show you is that uh, a plant can be associated with multiple sales organizations. Okay, it can be associated with multiple sales organizations. Uh, the diagram seems to indicate sales areas because of the triangle representation, right? But if you read the text below, it says a plant can belong to multiple sales organizations. Okay, uh, and therefore, I guess to multiple sales areas as well. Because a sales organization can be associated with multiple sales areas. Okay, but that comes from the fact that a plant can be assigned to multiple sales organizations. Okay, and plant and storage locations are used by all logistics modules and we have discussed this already. Uh, in materials management, plant is a location for stock. Uh, in production planning and execution, plant of course is the manufacturing facility. And in sales and distribution, a plant is the entity from which materials are provided to customers and services are delivered to customers also. Right? Remember in one of the earlier lectures I had given this example of you've got a consulting organization and they may have a, a New York office and a New depot where you go and load the trains okay so any of those could be shipping points but clearly yep uh, 
triangles, are they representing sales areas or sales organizations? The previous answer was sales areas. I know, I know. That's what I was saying. That's what I was saying. I was saying uh, it's a little misleading. Okay, for they represent sales areas according to the notes, right? But for the purpose of this slide, just think of this as really talking about sales organizations. Yeah, but isn't would be the same meaning if we talk about one and the same thing? Because they are interrelated, right? They are sales organizations. They are. I mean, one sales area can, you know, one sales organization can help to define multiple sales areas. So you could think of it that way also, right? But more likely, even in a question you're going to encounter, they might say sales organization. Right? Because that's what they've said in the book. They'll stick to that. So that's why I'm emphasizing that part of it. Okay. So any of these could be uh, shipping points. Okay. And shipping point is the highest organization unit for shipping. And each outbound delivery is processed by a shipping point. Right. In other words, in SAP, if you... Uh, as we'll see shortly in the sales and distribution process, what you do is you create a sales order and then to initiate the whole shipment process, the first step is to create an outbound delivery, right? So outbound delivery is a, you know, it, it's a formal document. See, once again, when we say outbound delivery, we can just interpret it from its regular English usage, right? It's an outbound delivery. You're going to deliver it. So it's a delivery. Right, but in SAP, it has a very specific connotation. It's a document. It's an outbound delivery document which initiates the delivery process. Okay, it's a delivery uh, document. So that's important. And if you remember when we were talking about inventory and warehouse management, I was speaking about under what conditions would you do the warehouse operations first, and under what conditions would you do the inventory operations first. Right. If you remember the warehouse operations is the physical thing of actually getting stuff from the store or putting it away in the store. Whereas the inventory management operation is just posting the goods issue or receipt. Okay. So the conditions under which you will do the warehouse management operation first is if you're doing your operation with respect to a delivery. Right. So th again, that means what? That a delivery document exists, an outbound delivery or an inbound delivery document already exists. In that case, you will do the warehouse operations first, right? So here is an example of an outbound delivery document that you create to start the whole shipment process. And we know that in sales and distribution, in the typical process, we'll first do all the warehouse operations and only finally we post goods goods issue. Okay, we'll, we'll see that. I'm jumping ahead of myself a little bit. <clears throat> 